Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is James and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you are subscribed, thanks for coming back, we appreciate it. And if you're not subscribed and you enjoy this video, maybe consider subscribing. So today what we've got for you is a interesting one comparing the differences between tube amplifiers and solid state amplifiers. Um, now, to begin with, before everyone starts typing in the comments, this is not a video intended to say one is better than the other or you should do this or you should do that. In Hi-Fi everything is subjective, you do what you like and what you enjoy and that's what's important. What I wanted to do here was take two amplifiers of similar value and feature set that use two completely different types of amplification method, do some listening tests on them and sort of talk about the benefit the pros and cons of each type and what they were better at and this might just help you decide what type of amplifier you should buy based on what kind of music you like to listen to or what kind of needs you have from an amplifier so just get that out of the way now i'm not trying to say one's better than the other this is just about sound for this test the two amplifiers that i've got here are the audio research i50 this is a 50 watt by two uh, integrated tube amplifier so it's Audio Research's only integrated amplifier. They just make the one, which is why we have matched this amplifier here against it, because so, we didn't have a whole lot of choice. But for those of you who are wondering about the tubes, for output tubes, each channel has two 6550 output tubes and one 3-6922 input stage tube. And then for the solid state amplifier that we're gonna compare it against, we have the Acuphase E280. This is a two by 105 watt class AB solid state amplifier. So completely different type of technology. Clearly there is a difference in power here, but as many of you will probably know, the value of watts in different classes of amplifier and different types of amplifier can be a wee bit blurry. The kind of power output we can expect from a 80 to 100 watt class AB amplifier might be pretty similar to the kind of output we can expect from a 50 watt uh, tube amplifier or class A amplifier because they just they do things differently. It all results in the numbers being a bit skew off, so you can't ever match two amplifiers against each other based purely on numbers. Either way, we've had a listen to them already. We know they're a pretty good match to go against one another. Both of them are very good brands. This shouldn't be a, a shoe win for one brand or the other. Audio Research is reputably, and in our opinion, one of the best tube amplifier brands in the world. Um, they have awesome quality control on their tubes. Everything is done in-house. They're really awesome. And Acuphase is a high-end Japanese solid-state amplifier. They've been in production for 50 years or so. They make fantastic solid-state amplifiers, pre-amplifiers, paramplifiers, CD players, DAX tuners. But the key thing that's similar between these two is the value, which is why we've chosen them out of our range. As I say, hopefully this video helps you pick one way or the other, depending on what you need. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to sit on the couch and we're going to listen to a four different CDs. We think that's about enough of different genres to sort of get a grasp on the fundamental differences between them. We've chosen Aaron Copland's uh, Symphony Number no. 3. We've got Nils Lofgren Acoustic Live for some sort of acoustic guitar -y stuff. Oscar Peterson's Trio We Get Requests for some jazz. And Dark Side of the Moon for rock and pop and that sort of thing. We think that's a pretty good range to cover. Um, it, you know, they're all really good recordings so we can trust them. Uh, in, in terms of source component and speakers and that sort of thing, for the CDs, we're going to be using the Acuphase DP570, which is their sort of middle of the range CD, SA CD player. And then for speakers, we're using the Sonus Faber Olympica Nova 2s because they're a lovely sounding speaker and they don't require too much power to be driven and they work well on both of these amplifiers from separate testing. So yeah, we'll have a sit down now, listen to the individual CDs on both amplifiers, make some notes about what we heard between them and then we'll come back to you with our results. One hour later. Okay, so I've had a listen to both the amplifiers on those CDs that I talked about. Um, very interesting taking a listen to them. I forget sometimes the stark difference between what tubes can do compared to what solid state does. Because to be perfectly honest, we listen to this far more often. These are far more common amplifiers to be sold. Um, whereas tubes uh, tend to be a bit more specialist or more subjective. So we don't listen to the tube stuff as often as I think we probably should. but. I'm reminded after listening to this just how good that they really are and what an interesting sort of sound they bring to music. But I do have some findings for you in terms of what kind of music suits what amplifier better and overall which amplifier was better at one thing and which was better at another. 
they both sounded great. I mean, don't get me wrong, these are both two lovely, you know, $10,000 plus amplifiers, so either of them I'd be happy with to own because they, you know, they're both very good amplifiers. But in terms of strengths, there were some clear differences. The tube amplifier, the Audio Research, has got that tubey, soft, open, organic sort of sound. Um, it really succeeded in creating a large, open sounding soundstage with a lot of headroom and uh, with a lot of space around the performers. Um, this is talking generally across all of the CDs. It created a lot of space and a really rich and organic sound. Um, it was especially good on instrumental pieces of music where there was like, you know, real organic instruments being played. So for instance, on jazz and that acoustic CD we had, I personally, I thought that this took the cake. It, um, the instruments sounded, there's no other word for it. They sounded real. They sounded like the real thing. The scale was correct. The tonality and the, and the speed of everything was correct. On the Accuphase, they just had on the digit on the solar state amplifier they just had you know less of a real touchy feely sort of sound but that's not to say that this didn't have things that it did better the solid state amplifier where this succeeded was in sound stage hands down um, this amplifier created true left to right all the way outside the speakers above the speakers behind the speakers really good sound stage so i could pick and see the locations of every single element throughout all the recordings on both the you know the the little acoustic live album we've got which is really just one guy with his guitar but there's an audience around him so you can you can pick and hear the different locations of things happening in the room and then of course Pink Floyd and classical you've got a lot of elements and things going on all at once this showcased the layering and the positioning of all those elements really well but this made all the instruments sound like real life instruments and it gave them the correct scale. That's kind of my summary of it. There's, across all four CDs it kind of did the same thing. This was better at the sound stage and this and the um, presentation and this was better at the tonality and the um, and the airiness of the presentation like the room, the environmental sound. So when listening to the four different CDs on the Jazz album, the Oscar Petersons, and on the Nils Lofgren acoustic, I preferred this amplifier because it had that real life organic musical sound to it. On the Pink Floyd album, and on the classical album, I preferred the Accuphase because it was able to present the locations of all those elements individually, which is something I'm really into. I think this is one of those things, well it's definitely one of those things where it is completely subjective. If you care more about tone and texture then a tube amplifier is probably going to make you they're probably going to be more your sort of amplifier you'll enjoy your music more but if you're like me and you prefer to be painted a picture of the locations of all the different elements um, then a solid state amplifier like this might be more your friend and the only and the classical one is interesting to me because you know often with classical it's got so much organic stuff going on there's basically no computers or amplifiers or anything involved no keyboards, it's all completely real instruments. So you would think that the tube amplifier would work better. I think that would probably be the case with more expensive tube amplifiers, like separate pre and power amplifiers, because you need quite a bit of power to demonstrate a large sound scale, uh, sorry, a large sound stage. This is a weaker amplifier compared to a lot of tube amplifiers. It's only 50 watts by, by two. Often you would try and have a bit more than that for a big presentation. But because this was able to provide the amount of power I needed for that large scale presentation, that's I think why it took the cake for me. So yeah, in a, if we had bigger systems, like a true pre and power separate of each brand, I think it's possible that the tube amplifier system could have won, but in this case, just with the wee $10,000 integrated, I generally preferred this amplifier here. So that's kind of my take on the sound, you know, lovely, soft, easy to listen to, great tonality, Lots of power, big soundstage, lots of depth and width and everything to do with the presentation. It is probably worth me talking about the differences in functionality between these amplifiers or between the different types of amplifiers that we have here. When customers ask us, you know, what about tube amplifiers, since these ones are normally on display first, we say, well, tube amplifiers, they are lovely sounding. You really, like, in a lot of cases, it's hard to 
for a solid state amp to match the sound of a tube amplifier because they are completely um, analog. But there's the issue of these guys here, the tubes. They come with some caveats. One, these tubes take a while to warm up. Most tube amplifiers will to get to optimum running temperature. Some amplifiers take anywhere between one and three hours to get to, to get them slowly up to the temperature where they're actually performing at their best. So a lot of tube amplifier owners will turn their systems on well in advance of listening to it or they'll just leave them on permanently. But the downside to doing that is all of these tubes have a certain amount of life in them. It's kind of like a projector bulb. They are rated for a certain number of hours before they start going out of bias and sounding a bit funny and fuzzy and you lose all the top end resolution. So these are something that you have to change semi-regularly depending on how often you use your amplifier. So you have to replace these tubes over time. They are also, because they're kind of an old school piece of tech in their design, they're kind of like an old candescent light bulb. Doesn't happen very often, but they can all of a sudden just die for no reason. Um, and then you have to source a new one. Yeah, so all of that to say there's a lot of convenience with this kind of amplifier. You turn them on, they start working within 10 seconds, and they are pretty much warm and ready and sounding the best after 20 to 30 minutes. So convenient and pretty good sounding. Less convenient, but still very hard to match in sound quality. So that's something that's gonna, you know, really come down to how far do you want to go with this? If you care only about sound quality and all of that inconveniences and costs and stuff doesn't matter to you, by all means, definitely consider getting a tube amplifier because you really can't match the sound of them. Or you really can't recreate the type of sound that they produce. But if you want something that is going to be reliable 100% of the time for the next 30 to 40 years, a high-end solid state amplifier might be more geared towards that if you don't want to have to service it. I don't want to bag on either of these amplifiers saying, oh, this is annoying and you have to service it and, oh, this just doesn't sound as good. They're both fantastic amplifiers, but they're just things you should be aware of when picking or choosing an amplifier style. That's been our video comparing solid state amplifiers to tube amplifiers in this price level, of course. If you have any questions about them, chuck them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them. If you liked this video or thought it was helpful, maybe give it a thumbs up or consider, consider hitting the subscribe button because we'll try and do more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Kakati anoa.